Eric Manley from Drake University. In this video, I'm going to walk you through creating your very first app using App Inventor for Android. Uh, it's a very simple app where we're going to have uh, a screen that looks like this. This is actually just showing you uh, what my phone screen looks like right now. And the way it works is there's a picture of an Android bulldog there, and when you click on him, he barks. So I touch him. He barks, okay? So it's a simple soundboard app. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way for now and show you how it works. Okay, so first thing you need to do is open up a web browser and go to this web address, appinventor.mit.edu. If you just type in that part, it'll take you here. Once you're there, click Create Apps. And that'll usually ask you to log in using a Google account. Uh, if you don't have a Google account already, just create one just for this. Okay, um, that'll bring you to a screen like this with some kind of introductory information. Just click continue, and then we're going to start a new project. Now, you probably don't have any projects already created, which is fine. So click projects, start new project. Now, this is a, a soundboard app. You're going to click a button, and a sound is going to, to, to play from the speakers of the phone. So I'm just going to call this soundboard. Click OK. Okay, that's going to bring up another page, which is going to be called your designer. Okay, so your designer, there it goes. Your designer um, has the most important part, which is the viewer, which kind of shows you what your app is going to look like um, when it's running. So you can kind of drag things from the palette over here onto here. In this case, that Android, uh, that Android Bulldog is just going to be a button. So I'm going to drag a button from the user interface over here onto the screen, from the user, user interface palette, that is. And um, then in order to get it to actually look like a Bulldog, we're going to look over here on the right-hand side. There's a Properties pane. And in the Properties pane, we've got... Uh, a bunch of different things we can mess with. So one of them is image. So here's where I'm going to upload a bulldog picture. And you'll notice over here in my desktop I've got the bulldog image right here. I've also got the sound file, the dog barking, just right there. Okay. Um, so you can grab those files or you can get whatever files you feel like. So okay, so through the image let's upload that file. I'm going to browse for it on my computer. There it is on my desktop. Click open. OK. Might take a minute for it to upload. Just be patient. And then once it's there, it should show up. OK, so we've got our picture of the Android Bulldog. Um, we've got some text appearing on the button. If you want text to appear, that's great. I think I don't like the text there, so I'm just going to actually remove it from over here on the Properties pane. OK. And there we go. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we need to add the sound. Okay, so sound is under media. And the way that we want to play the sound is using this component called sound. So drag that onto the screen. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that, well, a sound doesn't look like anything on your screen. So it actually shows up in the bottom here as something called a non visible component. Okay, so just make sure that's there. All the components on your screen kind of show up in this list right here. So we've got a button and we've got a sound. So just like we added the image to the sound, we've got to add the actual sound file to this sound component in App Inventor. So click Source, and we're going to upload another file. And here's where you would upload that sound file. So I have one called dogbark.wave. Most any WAV file or MP3 file should be fine here. Again, we'll give it a minute to upload it. Okay, and it appears to be ready. Okay, so I've got all the components I need. So the next thing we need to do is actually connect up the code so that the button knows what it's supposed to do when you, when you click it. It wants to play this sound. So in order to do that, you're going to click up in the right hand side here. You'll notice there are two buttons. One's for the designer. That's what we're looking at right now. The other thing we can click is blocks. So the blocks, this is actually where you write your code. This is where you write the code that tells all of the different components what they're supposed to do. Okay, and um, 
it's kind of nice because you can look over here on the left hand side and it kind of shows you things that might appear in your screen and it has a bunch of stuff that you'll always find on the built-in but anything that you have in your screen is going to show up right here now the most important thing is that when we click the button we want it to do something so what we're going to do is open up the button drawer here and look at for the different things you can do with a button um, so you'll notice that there's this block right here, this block is going to be the code that we write called when button one dot click. Okay, so a when block is a block that tells the button what to do, you know, when some certain event happens, like when it's clicked. Okay, so when the button is clicked, do, and then there's a space. Okay, so this space, we can fill it in with the action that it's supposed to do whenever the button is clicked. Okay, so what kind of action do we need? Well, we want it to play a sound. Well, we've got a sound component, and the sound, we already connected it up to that file, and so you can kind of look at, well, what can I do with a sound? Well, I can play the sound. So there's a block for doing that as well. So this purple block, call sound one dot play, plays the sound. So call block is a block that tells it to do something. Okay, so we've got two different kinds of blocks. When blocks are blocks that run when an event happens, and a call block just tells it to do something that it's sort of been set up and ready made to do. Okay, so when the button is clicked, we're going to call this sound to play it. Okay, so now we can test it out, see how it, see how it works. Um, so probably the best way to do that, if you've got an Android phone or an Android tablet with you, uh, as long as it's on the same Wi-Fi network, what you want to do is get an app um, from the Google Play Store called MIT AI2 Companion. Um, so I'll show you that here on my screen. Okay. So this is my home screen. And I've got this app here called MIT AI2 Companion. It's a companion app that works with App Inventor. And the cool thing about it is that I can open it up. There we go. And it looks like this. And it's asking for you to type in a character, six character code. So the way that you get the six character code so that you can connect your phone to this app that you're making, you click connect and then AI Companion. Okay. When you do that, it brings up, you can scan the QR code, of course, or you can just type in the code directly. I'm just going to type in the code directly. So here we go. It looks like WDPWYF. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to say connect with code. Okay. Try it again. There we go. Okay. And again, it's got to make the connection between the phone and App Inventor, so sometimes it takes a minute, but then it pops up, and this app that you're seeing right now is the one you just built. So if you click on your bulldog, it's going to play the sound. Now, if we were to break our code over here, like if the sound wasn't inside the when button click, then it wouldn't do anything. And over here, when you're connected through AI2 Companion, You'll notice now when you click the bulldog, it doesn't do anything. So it kind of auto-updates this while you're working on it. If we put it back, it'll play the sound. There we go. Congratulations. You made your first app.